You're listening to the Toolstation Western League podcast with Ian Knockold and Tom Hiscott. Welcome to episode 31 of the Toolstation Western League podcast with me, Ian Knockolds, and I'm delighted to be joined on the line by the editor of the Western League Bulletin. It is Tom Hiscott. Hello, Tom. How are you? Yeah, I'm not doing too bad. Uh, yeah, recovered from a, uh, a long, longish weekend, so yeah, not too bad. Yourself? Did you have a slight bout of illness over the weekend? A little bit, yeah. Nothing, nothing too major. Just, yeah, just helped me back a little bit, but yeah. All, all good, all guns blazing now. Yes, well, you, you and my daughter both. I, um, I was going to take my kids over to Radstock on uh, Saturday. Uh, well, we got as far as um, Dilton Marsh, which is just the other side of Westbury, um, and, and my, my youngest, Betty, started being sick in the car, which, um, which was really beautiful for all concerned. So, yes, we drove back to the house with all the windows down, and she was promptly handed over to her mother for a good mm-hmm. washing. Um, so yeah, so that rather that rather hamstrung my ability to watch um, football this weekend, which I was um, disappointed to say because Radstock, of course, had a had a good win at the weekend. But um, never mind, we uh, we get to talk about it today nonetheless. Uh, and um, when we start our roundup of the uh, of the um, mi- midweek matches, really. Um, it's all about the Les Phillips Cup. We had the Les Phillips Cup quarterfinals, um, first quarterfinals on Tuesday, the 5th of March. Buckland and Cabri Heath was a washout, but Khan managed to get it on with Bridgewater Town, didn't they? They did, and it was, uh, it was the Premier Division side who managed to, to sneak through. Uh, Bridgewater becoming the first semi finalists. Um, Ian Bellinger set them on the way in the ninth minute uh, before Matt Hudson then equalised. Uh, uh, in the early stages of the second half, scoring for the, the second match on, on the bounce. Uh, but, it, yeah, Bridgewater uh, managed to take advantage of a, a red card for Khan during the second half, and it was Jake Brown who headed home the winner uh, six minutes in time. So, uh, yeah, a close one, but it was, uh, yeah, Bridgewater uh, through to the final four. And Wednesday, we had two more quarter-final matches. Both of these managed to beat the weather, I'm pleased to say. Plymouth Parkway, they were at home to First Division Canesham Town, and um, they gave a good account of themselves. Yeah, another another uh, close tussle between a, a Premier Division and a, and a First Division side, but it was the uh, yeah the higher ranked uh, uh, team going through Plymouth Parkway uh, to uh, another uh, team victorious by two goals to one. Uh, Stefan Lee had actually put the, uh, the the First Division side ahead, so Kensham uh, led after after half an hour. Uh, but then the closing stages, the uh, the, the, sec- the first half, uh, they managed to. Equalised Park Parkway, and then it was Adam Carter uh, who struck the winning goal and uh, helped help the hosts uh, through to the through to the next round. And also, Shepton Mallet, last season's finalists, of course, they entertained our cup specialists, Willand Rovers. Yeah, rather blown away, uh, Shepton Mallet in this one. Uh, eventually going down four two, so they they did well to keep it close. But uh, yeah, Willand uh, scoring three goals in the opening twenty minutes. Uh, Brad Austin and uh, a, a double from Luke Mortimer. And Dean Stamp also scoring before half time. So uh, yeah, uh, all four of their their goals in, in victory coming before half time. So a uh, good performance from them. And uh, yeah, uh, they're through to, to play Bridgewater in the semi finals and Buckland or Cadbury Heath, as you mentioned, got got rained off. Uh, and the winner of that will host Perth Parkway in the in the semi final. Yeah, some mouth-watering ties there. I think it's going to be a real classic final, isn't it, between wh- whoever gets through, really. I mean, yeah. we've got all, all sides there with good cup pedigree, but, I mean, I think it's really shaping up to be a memorable Les Phillips Cup final this season, Tom. Yeah, I mean, you look at the, well, five teams left, um, the three that are already through there in the, the upper reaches of the, uh, the Premier Division, so it's good to see that they've not sort of taken their eye off the ball uh, in the cup competition and they're taking, taking it seriously, I think. Um, gauging gauging some uh, social media sort of uh, interest, I think there is yeah quite a lot of uh, um, people quite quite enjoying the competition this season. Obviously, it's slightly revamped uh, with all the all the midweek matches, and uh, yeah, it's looking like a, as you say a, a pretty pretty big final on the cards, uh, depending on yeah who, who reaches that that, that showpiece event. Absolutely, and we look forward to telling you where that final will be played. It's always one of the uh, the, the conversation pieces of the Western mm. League, the uh, the host club for the final, and um, with geography as it could be for that final, that I'm sure will be an interesting element for us to re- reflect upon in coming weeks. Anyway, we move on now to Saturday the 9th of March, and we kick off with Bitten. Uh, they were at home to Bridgewater Town. Yeah, they were. So uh, obviously Bridgewater have had, had, had the... Uh 
the, the cup game in midweek, uh, but they uh, nearly nearly stole all three points in this one. So two teams uh, towards the, the upper reaches of the, uh, the, the the table, and it was goalless for 85 minutes. Uh, but then Bridgewater managed to go ahead. Uh, Carl Jones, a uh, rare goal for him, uh, managing to get on the end of uh, Jake Brown's cutback. Uh, but then Bitten uh, managed to managed to find an equaliser two minutes into stoppage time. So it was uh, yeah. Nearly a smash and grab uh, from uh, sorry, nearly a smash and grab from uh, Bridgewater, but uh, Bitten managed to grab a share of the points, and it was Alex Grimshaw who managed to buy home their equaliser later. Two big hitters in front of a big crowd, it has to be said. Buckland Athletic, they were at home to Bradford Town. Yeah, indeed, and uh, Buckland uh, a really good first half performance from them, uh, helping them claim a, a four-one win. Uh, Richard Gross going twice before the break in this one, uh, after Austin Booth had put them ahead. Uh, pretty early on, uh, Groves then had a had a penalty at the end of the first half. Could have made it four 0 at the break, uh, but uh, he saw his spot kick saved by Jordan Dibble, uh, and then Bradford managed to to get a goal back. Will Hailston, uh, maybe a little little chance for a fight back, but uh, yeah, that was uh, not, not not to be. And uh, Buckland uh, adding a fourth late on through Ryan Bush, so a big big win for for Buckland at home. Now, Cadbury Heath, um, they were at home to um, a, a team that's in absolutely awesome form at the moment, Tom, Plymouth Parkway. Yeah, uh, a tenth consecutive uh, league victory now for, for the Parkway and a 4-1 win, uh, this one, away at Cadbury Heath. So, uh, yeah, they're really, uh, really the, the team, to, team to stop right now. Uh, Nick Milton heading them heading them ahead inside 15 minutes and then Jordan there uh, doubling the advantage right at the end of the first half in stoppage time. Uh, lobbed finish from him. Uh, Mike Williams then adding uh, adding a third to pretty much pretty much end the game, and then Tegan Rosenquist, one of my favourite names uh, in the in in the Premier Division, he managed to add a fourth for, for Parkway after Simon McElroy pulled a goal back for Heath. But yeah, uh, another big win for for the Parkway, and they roll on, and they're now up into second spot. Well, you said it there: ten wins uh, in the league on the spin, and uh, twelve in total because they've been in cup action as well. So twelve wins on the spin, and that was my first question. Um, to Lee Hobbs, the manager, of course, of Plymouth Parkway. We did speak to Lee earlier in the season, but I started my interview this week by asking him whether or not they were hitting form at the right time of the season. Hopefully, hopefully. Um, to be fair, obviously, we started the season well and it looks like we're ending the season well. It was only a little minor blip in October, which obviously put us behind everyone else and... We were always playing catch-up, and I think our, our lowest position this year has been sixth. And week by week, with the, moment, with the momentum we have, we seem to be creeping up on that top spot, uh, like going unnoticed, really. But yeah, we're, we're enjoying ourselves, and long may it continue. We, we know the run won't last forever, but all we can do is keep winning football matches and see where it takes us, and not concern ourselves with anything else that goes on anywhere else. Well, you had a very good win away, 4-1 at Cadbury Heath. Was it as comprehensive as the scoreline suggests? No, not at all, obviously. For anyone that knows, Cadbury's a tough place to go. Obviously, it's a very open open pitch where the conditions did play a part, to be fair. Um, but credit to us, we adapted quicker than them and we were very clinical in the last third, which ultimately is, is the difference in whether you win games or whether you don't. I had the pleasure of being in Plymouth um, a few weeks ago, so I've got some idea of how long it takes um, to get down to you. I know that the, the theme of travel was one that we discussed before when you were on the podcast, but do you think, um, as you and your players have become more accustomed to the travel into um, Somerset and Wiltshire um, for the Western League, do you feel that uh, you are acclimatising to the Western League? Is it something that you've got used to over, over the season now? Yeah, for sure, obviously. It doesn't phase us, see, I'm not one bit. Um, but I know every team in the division hates coming to us. Um, obviously, where they've had it their own way for, for so long, where the jurisdiction isn't that big, there's only probably a, three or four clubs who's out on a limb to others. Um, but no, we, we enjoy it. We, 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 we like away days as much as we like home days. Um, like I've always said, so, you sell it as a day out with your mates and that's what it is. And when you pick up three points, um, obviously, ultimately, the, the trip goes a lot smoother coming up. 
Uh, one of the other themes I can remember from our first interview was that you were quite relaxed about this season. I mean, we talked about the ambitions of the club, and I know that you're keen to progress into the uh, into the Southern League. But this was your first um, season in the um, in the Western League, and I know that you were sort of keen to acclimatise. So, given your lofty league position at the moment and how well you're doing, I mean, is there still no pressure uh, on you and your team to achieve promotion this season? Of course there is. There's, there'll always be pressure on us because we see ourselves as a big club that should be challenging at the right end of the table. And boring that little hitch in, in October, we've learned quickly with the division we had. Obviously, the best thing that happened to us all season was getting pumped by Willem 4-0 early on. And we, we learned quickly that we weren't going to have it our own way. And fortunately enough for me, I've got players who've been there, seen it and done it. And... We adapted quickly and we're now on a roll where we feel we know how to win games and obviously but basically taking one game as, as it comes. Well, taking the next game as it comes, it's bitten <coughs> on Wednesday. Now that's going to be a massive game for you, isn't it? Yeah, equally. It's just a big game for both clubs, obviously. With us both riding on within that top three and obviously Willand will probably be hoping for a draw. But us and Bitten, we want to maintain... The, the, the winning form that we've both been in and is it a potential six-pointer? Possibly. Um, don't get me wrong, there's a, there's a lot of football to be played still to the end of the season and whether this result determines what the placings are come the end of the year, I, I wouldn't go as far as to say that, but no, it's a big three points if we get it, it's a big three points if they get it. Um, we're the home team, they're travelling to us on a midweek, hopefully those those little bits of detail can, can, can go in our favour. But one thing's for sure, they'll be up for it. And for me, we'll be up for it just as equally as much as them. And uh, it'll be a case of who wants it more on the day, I reckon, because there probably ain't a lot between the two teams. Well, I mean, you mentioned that there's plenty of football left to play before the end of the season. I mean, there's plenty of football to play against Bitten before the end of the season, isn't there? Because you've got them on Wednesday and yeah. then you've got them again at the end of the month. So, I mean, I think to call it a six-pointer is, is, is actually mathematically correct. I think it's probably the only time you probably can be mathematically correct with that analogy. But, I mean, it is, it is massive for both clubs. I mean, do you, do you view this as a blessing or a curse that you're, you've got the opportunity to take on one of your closest rivals twice in the running? I've said all along, and I say it to my players all the time, I see the bottom half games as harder games than the top half games because teams in the bottom half are stubborn. They, they, they ain't got no intentions of trying to beat teams like Dorf Parkway, Willand or Bitten, if you like, and they make it difficult for us, whereas the games against the top teams, they're more expansive where you're both going hammer and tongs to go and get the win. I see the lesser games as cup finals and the bigger games as bread and butter games for me personally. Looking at the league table, one of the lesser games, I suppose, and I really don't mean any disrespect to Bridport when I say this because actually I've got a lot of time for them. Bridport, you've got coming up at home. Now, that is not going to be an easy game, is it? Because they are a tough, tough side. Definitely not. Obviously, we went there, I think it was about two and a half, three months ago, and it, they, they gave us a tough game then. Uh, I feel for them a little bit because I keep monitoring their results and they, they don't seem to be picking up the wins that they should be for whatever reason. I don't know what that is, obviously. Um, but they were a good team and they, they gave us a good test that not so long ago and I anticipate exactly the same sort of test on Saturday. So, no, again... We're the home team, so hopefully we, we can make home advantage count and, and we can record it and possibly have another good week and have back-to-back -back wins this week. I think Bridport's in a little bit of a false position, if you like. Um, I think they should be a little bit higher up the table than they are, but I think draws have been their uh, downfall this, this year. One final question, Lee, because I know you don't want to give too much away. You're playing a lot of the big sides in the running now to the to the end of the season. I mean, do you feel, and I don't know whether you've set this as a target, but if you were to win all of your remaining games, do you think that would be good enough to secure a U promotion? I genuinely don't know. This, this division's that tight this year. If we did do that and we finished on 90-plus points, 90-plus points in any other, any other division should be winning you leagues. But... Such as the form of Willand and such as the form of Bitton, yeah, it isn't plain sailing. All we can do is just keep winning um, and then just literally see where it takes us. But their their runnings ain't no diff ain't much different to, to ours. To be fair, Willand, if you like, 
have arguably got the easier one, but they've still got Clevedon in there, they've still got Bridgewater, they've still got Bitton, and they've still got Chip and Sovereign away, who, as we know, can cause the big team's problems. They beat us and they beat Bitton and they drew with Willem. Well, Lee, thank you very much um, for taking the time to speak to us today. You're making this a fascinating um, race. I don't know, it wouldn't be fair to say that you've gone under the radar because it doesn't feel that you have, but you've, you've, certainly, you've certainly come to the front of the pack um, at the right time. So it'll be fascinating to see how this plays out at the end of the season. It will be, and we're very, very much looking forward to it. And like we say, in the next eight weeks, or even in the next three to four weeks, I'm sure all will come, become a little bit more clearer on what de- what destination this title is going to go. And my thanks to Lee for his time. Now we move on to Cribs, and um, they took on um, the previously impregnable Westbury United. Cribs uh, coming out here, uh, a 3-1 victory uh, over Westbury, obviously. Denting Westbury's uh, promotion uh, chances quite a bit, uh, but it's uh, very much an informed Cribs. They've now won six of the last eight uh, in the league, so not a, not an easy easy game for Westbury, and they, they found out the hard way. Jordan Loverbond uh, scoring twice uh, for the home side. Josh Ferguson had earlier equalised for Westbury, uh, but again, yeah, Loverbond second at the start of the second half, took Cribs ahead for the second time. Uh, and then it was Lewis Hedges, 20 minutes from time, uh, managed to wrap up all three points and a 3-1 victory for Cribs at home to Westbury. Boss, we need some supplies for tomorrow. Oh, what's that? It's the helping hand from Tool Station. But it's a... Uh... A hand, yes. It's showing me around the Tool Station website. Nice. Yeah. I've selected paints, cables, sealant and plumbing fittings. I can check up to the minute stock, hit this button, thanks hand, and it's ready to collect in 20 minutes. So get the van. Can't the hand? It can't reach the pedals. Fair enough. Click and collect. Another helping hand from Tool Station. Your best mate for the job. Well, that um, sums up our um, review of the Premier Division matches on Saturday the 9th of March. Now we look at the First Division, and um, we kick off with Ashton and Backwell United. Uh, they were at home to Welton Rovers. Yeah, indeed, and, uh, well, looking now, obviously, now into the First Division, but we've got another team uh, banging form. Six wins in seven uh, for Ashton and Backwell. Uh, latest victory at the Lance at Scott Stadium, brilliantly, brilliantly named uh, arena. Uh, a 2-0 win at home to Welton, and it was uh, two pretty late goals uh, during the second half. Uh, Dan Elson and Harry Walker, the final 15 minutes, both of them scoring. And, uh, yeah, um, holding off a, a challenge from uh, Welton, they played pretty well by all, all accounts. So, uh, yeah, uh, another good win for Ashton and Backwell. Now, I've been a bit worried about the cheese men in the last few weeks. Their, their form, is, they'd had a bit of a blip, but they returned to winning ways on Saturday. Yeah, very much, and uh, they'll be happy to see... Uh, their, their strike duo, Adam Jones and Adam Wright, we know them um, towards the top. Well, at the top of the uh, the goal scoring charts in the first division. Uh, a couple of weeks with uh, uh, minimal action for those two in front of goal, but uh, yeah, they were back amongst it on uh, Saturday afternoon. Uh, Jones uh, scoring, scoring the uh, scoring the opener, uh, and then adding another uh, in the opening quarter of the match. So he started the game really well, and then his uh, yeah strike partner Adam Wright also getting a goal uh, before the break. Uh, Chris Coombs then adding adding a fourth for four cheddar and uh, yeah eventually running out four one winners of the Bristol Telephones obviously have, have shown signs of improvement recently so a pretty pretty good win for cheddar and uh, yeah they, uh, they they maintain their uh, leader top of the table. Now another team that's been in good form of late is Sherbourne Town. They travelled to Chippenham Park and their good form continues. Yeah indeed and it's a, a third away win on the bounce as well so uh, Sherbourne. Uh, not not needing to needing the home comforts, playing very well on on the road on their travels, and it was another yeah another road victory. Two one away at Harden Hewish Park against Chippenham Park, and it was uh, Hayden Hodges uh, and then Ashley Clark scoring for the the away side uh, to get them a, another victory in this. And uh, next up, Longwell Green Sports. They took on Chard Town. Yeah, so um, Longwell Green, uh, unfortunate uh, defeat for them in midweek, a five nil something. Uh, home to Warminster. I don't think many people have seen that coming, uh, despite how well Warminster, Warminster are playing right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, brilliant, brilliant fight back from Longwell Green to be fair, uh, letting in all those goals in midweek and then holding off a, a charge side who uh, hit the buffers a little bit recently, but still in a in a pretty pretty lofty uh, league position. But uh, a four 0 win for Longwell Green Sports on Saturday afternoon, and it was two goals apiece from Courtney Charles and also Ali Bamford. So uh, yeah. Uh, another good win for Longwell Green, who are, who are rocketing up the table. And finally, in the first division, Wincanton Town. Were they at the races against Devizes Town? 
Unfortunately not. Uh, this game very much uh, all about the second half. Goalless at the break, uh, and then unbelievably six goals in the, in the second half. So uh, yeah, uh, quite a, quite a quite a second forty five minutes down there. Uh, a four two win in the end for Devizes. Uh, not doing too bad uh, away from home. The second win on the bounce, and uh, yeah, Mark Robinson scoring twice for, for Devizes. Uh, also goals from Sam Dodds, and then a, a free kick. Uh, from Ryan Bowl, I know that's not his first. He's pretty good from the uh, bit of a set piece wizard. Uh, and there were goals from uh, Toby Dalton, Cole, and, and Gary Chapman for Wincanton. But uh, yeah, they fell fell short, and it was Devizes who ran out four two victors. Well, we spoke to Tom Perkins earlier this season, the co-manager at uh, Devizes Town, um, but I thought it was uh, a good time to catch up with the other half of that particular dynamic duo, Darren Walters. And I started off by asking him about Devizes' impressive performance at Wincanton Town. Yeah, we were on um, Saturday. To be to be fair, um, it was pretty pretty dull first half, nil nil at half time, um, and the game livened up a bit second half. Um, managed to get ourselves two nil two nil up, then three nil up. Um, there was a little bit of a scare when they went to three uh, one, but then the fourth goal really killed the game off, um, and it was another reasonably comfortable win for us. Um, our away form certainly a lot better than our than our home form at the moment. Yeah, I was going to have a chat with you about your home form, but um, I mean back-to-back wins, um, uh, which is pleasing. But I mean, you've, you've the, the side have been in indifferent form, haven't they, um, um, yes. for a while now? I mean, what do you put that down to? Well, there's, there's a number of reasons, really, Ian. Um, obviously, our home forms let us down badly this year. I think last year we only lost three games at home, whereas this season I think we've lost probably ten games at home. Um, probably the second worst home record in the league at the moment um, so our home form certainly been a, been an issue I don't know why I can't really put that down to anything in particular um, but our way, our way form's been a lot better um, player availability's been a problem for, problem for us this year um, we've had a lot of injuries to key players um, chopping and changing the side from week to week um, especially in the defensive areas um, and, and that's been really, you know, the main cause of why we were sort of sat mid-table in the league at the moment. I mean, you had that heavy defeat at home to Canesham, then you got yourselves yes. a good point at Khan, and then another home defeat um, to Sherbourne. So, I mean, when you look at these two back-to-back wins, um, and, I mean, do you think you've turned a corner now? Well, I'd like to think so, but um, it seems to be one step forward and two back again um, at the moment. Um, I found out last week that one of our key players for us is going to miss the last month of the season to having a, uh, a small operation, so he's going to miss the last month of the season. Um, and then Westbury have put seven days in for our striker, Mark Robinson, which I should probably find out over the next couple of the days, whether he's going or staying. So, again, it's not good news um, from last week, really, on that front. And, you know, Again, it's a couple of players that we could potentially be without for the, for the remainder of the season. You're 11th in the league at the moment. Now, we spoke to Tom Perkins, your um, your co-manager, earlier in the season. And I know at the time he was he was optimistic. He was looking, um, certainly, I think, for a, a top five or six finish. But yes. even, even though you've got um, the challenges that you've just um, discussed, when you look at your running now, I mean, should the fans be looking up the table as opposed to down? Well, it's certainly achievable. You know, it's mathematically possible. Um, and as long as it's like that, you just still him a shout. But we've really got to put a run together, um, you know, four or five wins um, to put some points on the board. It's very close from, from fifth down to, to tenth, eleventh spot. It's very close. Um, every team seems to have a little bit of a dip in, dip in form. And um, uh, it's, uh, currently at the moment, Warmish are on a great run. And there's a couple of teams that put runs together and they, they climb themselves up the table. So it's, it's very tight. But, uh, I mean, if I could get a top ten finish... Um, I'd be delighted with the way the season's gone this year. I think that'll be a you know a decent achievement considering the, the problems we've had. I think realistically maybe we'll finish just outside that, but you know we just got to give it a go, try and get the best team we can on the pitch each week, and see what see where it takes us really. I mean, you finished very strongly last season, didn't you? At the end of last season, you went on a very impressive run. I mean, can you see any yeah. parallels between last season and this well, season? Well, <laughs> maybe they will. I don't know why they save it for the last ten games of the season. Um, <laughs> You know, we had a reasonable start um, this year, um, but the sort of middle part of the season's been been tough for us. But um, you know, hopefully we can get a few results. We've got another couple of away games coming up, 
uh, Bishop's Lydiard on Saturday, uh, Sherbourne midweek next week. So again, it's a, it's a tough couple of trips, but uh, hopefully we can get some out of the games. Yes, Bishop's Lydiard next. Then I think you've got Well City as well coming up soon, haven't you? So I mean. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be. Well, we certainly don't want to be disrespectful to any of the sides. But I mean, you've managed to. You, you've got through a lot of the uh, the top sides that are sort of you know that are that are hunting down yeah. promotion. So, um, realistically speaking, um, uh, are you hoping to get as many points on the ball between now and the end of the season as possible? Are you viewing those games as winnable? Oh, definitely. Uh, you know, every, every game is winnable in this league. Um, but like I say, it's, a lot is going to depend on what. Um, what side we can get on the pitch um, we still got a couple of injuries at the moment uh, we're hoping to get back in the next couple of weeks um, you know so hopefully if we can get a decent side on the pitch we can um, we can get some points out of these games we've got a couple of reserves lads that come up um, and have played pretty well for us and are just settling in Sam Dodd's got his first Western League goal on Saturday coming up from the reserves so you know we've got to give these lads a try and see how, see how they do and my thanks to Darren for his time. Now we look ahead, Tom, at the fixtures uh, coming up uh, this week. Most of the fixtures, of course, in the midweek. Um, chances are the listeners um, will, uh, will be listening to this after they've taken place. Um, but um, one particular fixture on Wednesday did catch your eye, didn't it? Well, yeah. Uh, two of the... Well, we, we look at the big hitters in the, uh, the Premier Division quite a bit. And, uh, yeah, they've got the, the, the clash on, on Wednesday evening. Uh, down at Belief Third Park, we've obviously mentioned Plymouth Parkway, 10 wins uh, on the spin in the league and 12 in all competitions, as you mentioned. Uh, and they've got a home game against Bitten, who obviously are, are pretty capable of uh, knocking off a, a top-class opponent. And, uh, yeah, they'll have uh, designs on catching Parkway on the table. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a, not a six-pointer, because, uh, yeah, obviously nothing, nothing counts for six points, so to speak. Uh, but yeah, uh, a big clash down there on uh, down in Devon on uh, Wednesday evening. So that'll be uh, one to keep an eye on. Yeah, Bitten have gone a bit spursy, haven't they, in the last couple of weeks? They've had a couple of results that, you know, frankly, I'm a bit surprised about. Funny thing about them is that they are capable of getting up for the big game, and they don't come much bigger than that, so I reckon that'll be an absolute belter. Um, also on um, on Wednesday the 13th, I will give a notable mention in the Somerset FA Premier Cup quarterfinal to uh, Taunton Town, taking on none other than Welton Rovers, of course, who saw off Bath City in the uh, in the previous round of that competition. So my my very best of luck goes to the the Green Army um, for that um, for that clash because Taunton, of course, going incredibly well in their division. So um, that would be a real test. Uh, and also there is Friday night football. Um, in the first division, uh, a Wiltshire derby between Corsham Town and Warminster Town. This is a 7.45 kick-off, and I bet there will be a big, big gate for this one. Uh, what a wonderful way to get our weekend of football off, up and running. Um, Saturday the 16th of March is obviously when um, the, uh, the, the fixtures in earnest take place. And which games have, have tickled your fancy at the weekend, Tom? Yeah, a bit of a quirky one uh, in terms of the... Uh the fixed list, uh, we've got Bradford uh, hosting Buckland, and uh, yeah, obviously 20 minutes ago or so we were, we were discussing the, uh, the reverse fixture, uh, Buckland running out 4-1 winners uh, over Bradford uh, last Saturday, and uh, Bradford get the earliest possible chance at a bit of revenge, so uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that one plays out. Yeah, well, the game that's caught my eye is um, Bitten against Westbury, um, Bitten uh, obviously flying high at the top of the table, but they have had a couple of wobbles recently. Westbury United exactly the same, really. I mean, we were, you know, we were, for most of the podcasts this season, we've been talking about Westbury winning week in, week out, and uh, I think uh, finally the season's caught up with them a little bit. Um, but I reckon that will be an absolute bell to two sides that will um, that will entertain, I'm sure, and hopefully there'll be a good crowd for that. And if we look into the first division, Tom, what game have you gone for down there? Gone for two of the two of the form teams, Ashton and Backwell now. Uh, consolidating third spot, they're five points ahead of uh, their closest challenger, uh, and they've got another home game uh, against the Sherborne team, who I think, yeah, as we mentioned, won three, three away from home in a row. So uh, yeah, something's got to give there. And uh, two teams, about 22, well, just looking at the table, 22 points between them. But uh, yeah, two teams banging form, and uh, yeah, should be a enjoyable afternoon down there uh, when, when Ashton take on uh, Sherborne. 
Well, we've got an awful lot going on. There's an awful lot of subplots in the first division. I see Radstock are playing Portis Head, of course, um, two sides at the wrong end of the table. And um, if only we'd been talking about this fixture a few months ago, Chard Town against Cheddar. I mean, Chard, for so long, doing incredibly well in the first division, but um, they really are on a poor run of form, and they won't welcome um, the visit of um, high-flying Cheddar. But um, Carn Town, now they're a side that um, hasn't been in the greatest form of late against Kainshimu, who themselves have had a bit of a blip, but I think Khan, they're the sort of side that will want to arrest that um, situation. I know that they've got lofty ambitions for that club, and rightly so, and they will take on a, a side in Kainshimu, of course, who are going for the title and promotion. So um, I reckon that will be, a, that will be a, a good one to watch. Now, last week, we did the top shots, the, uh, the leading goal scorers across the league. And uh, as, the, as, we, as we get towards the business end of this season, uh, I think uh, the, 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 uh, the league tables take on growing significance. Uh, so, Tom, do you want to um, take us through who's hot and who's not in the Premier Division? Mm-hmm, indeed. OK. So, looking at the Premier Division, uh, Willem's still leading the way. Uh, 29 games played. Yes, and they've got nine league games left, so we are, yeah, very much, uh, as, as you say, reaching the business end. Uh, 29 games played, yeah, they've got 73 points, so they're the only team past 70 at the moment. Uh, we then got two uh, two teams on 69 points that have got both got a game in hand on Willand. So we've got Plymouth Park, where they played 28, and they're on 69 points. And we've also got Bitten in third, 28 games played, 69 points. So it's, uh, yeah, those three are looking... Like they will probably be the ones to challenge for the for the for the overall title, uh, but it's uh, yeah very much uh, five teams up there in the uh, in the main uh, chase for chase for the top spots. Westbury doing extremely well as we know, first division champions last year. 30, 30 games played, sixty six points, so just three behind those two ahead. Uh, and then Bridgewater also played thirty, uh, they're on sixty four. So those are those are the five. Uh, pulled away a little bit at the top, and it's yeah, as I say, Will and the part where I'm bitten probably looking like it's going to be them for for the challenging for the title. Things a little bit more cut and dried at the bottom of the Premier Division at the moment. Shortwood United played thirty; they've got seven points. Um, uh, Hengrove Athletic, a game in hand over Shortwood; they've played twenty-nine; they've got sixteen um, points. And then uh, Roman Glass played thirty; they've got twenty-two points. Uh, just above them, Brislington played 29, 24 points, and then Chipping Sobbery up to 32. I don't think Chipping Sobbery have got a great deal to worry about, and frankly, I'm not entirely sure that Brislington or Roman Glass have either. But certainly, if you're Hengrove or Shortwood, then those are the two sides that you'll be hoping to reel into the relegation mire, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, indeed, there is a little bit of a gap opening up at the top of the first division, isn't there, Tom? Yeah, indeed. So uh, we've got yeah two teams that have pulled away a little bit. Uh, we've got Cheddar at the top, and they've played 28, so they've got 10 games left. They've got 69 points, uh, and then Canesham, a further point behind, so they've got 68 points, uh, and they've played 29, so they've got played a game more, uh, but those two, definitely the two to, to challenge it, challenge, sorry, for the uh, for the title in the first division, and they've probably been, yeah, they've been the cream of the crop this year, and uh, it'll be fascinating to see over the, over the last 10 games how those two get on. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Ashton and Backwell up into third, 29 games played, they've got 56 points, doing really well. Uh, we've then got new new teams up in fourth and fifth. Now we've got Caution, 29 games played, they've got 51 points, and 51 points is also where Longwell Green uh, sit, they've played 30 games, and then we've got Calm and Chard who have dropped down to sixth and seventh. And uh, the bottom of the first division is quite congested. Bristol Telephones played 29, they're on 20 points. Four points above them, Portis Head played 28, they're on 24 points. But only a point above them is Chippenham Park, played 29, 25 points. And only two pu- points above them is Radstock Town, they've played 29, they're on 27 points. So um, within three points of the 19th placed Portis Head Town, Oldland Abertonians just two points above Radstock and um, Bishop Sutton only two points above Oldland Abertonian. So it's um, very catch-me-if-you-can at the bottom of the first division. Um, Tom, thank you very much indeed for your time, as always, this week. Um, we've been looking at your excellent bulletin. Where can the listeners find that? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's, yeah, the best place to, to find that will be on the uh, Tool Station League uh, homepage. Uh, there's a tab along the top which you can click and then download uh, the latest format, and it's also on the homepage uh, where you can yeah, download it in, on PDF. And uh, yeah, that's uh, usually up on Sunday afternoon. 
Excellent stuff. And of course, have you penned your column for the non-league paper? Yeah, indeed. Yeah, a couple of hundred words on the uh, the Premier Division uh, and the match that took place on Saturday afternoon. So yeah, that's in the uh, step five and six section in the non-league paper. Excellent stuff, Tom. Thank you very much indeed for your time. And uh, welcome. I look forward to catching up with you and the listeners on next week's Tool Station Western League podcast.